Welcome back. That was Kyle. Shay? Yep, you welcoming you back. Spell it, out so they can see it. spell it out. No, we don't have time for that. <laughs> Sue manages a soccer club and must decide how many members to send to soccer camp. We're going to highlight important information here. So let's see. Let's get the highlighter out. Um, you know, the... The word problems, application problems are always the most difficult because you have to write the inequalities or write the equations or write the expressions. So it's important to dissect word for word what we have going here. So Sue manages a soccer club, must decide how many members to send to soccer camp. And then here's some important information here. It costs $75 for each advanced player. Oh, they're advanced. Um, 50 for the intermediates. And she has a limit of how much she can spend, which is $13,250. So there's a limit on how much she can spend. And she also has a minimum amount of people that she must send. She must send at least 60 more advanced than intermediate. Ooh, another one. And a minimum of 80 advanced players. There's a lot going on here. Find the number of each type of player Sue can send to camp to maximize the number of players. Okay. So we have to write a bunch of inequalities to represent these constraints. So she is limited by the amount of money she can spend and then she also has to send a certain number of types of players to the camp. So let's talk about the money and the variables first off. So we're going to need two variables and we've been using whoa that's on the highlighter still. We've been using X and Y since we're graphing. And so what should X and Y stand for here? Seems like they have two types of players going to camp, right? Advanced. So X could be the number of advanced players and y would be number of intermediate okay so let's start talking about uh, limitations on x and y in most of these real problems it doesn't make sense that x and y are negative so there's some sort of obvious constraints as far as that the number of players she sends is going to be a non-negative number. So there are a couple of obvious ones there. Let's just get those out of the way first. It also says something about she must send a minimum of 80 advanced players. I was kind of noticing the easier stuff. So a minimum of 80 advanced players. That tells me that x has to be not only greater than or equal to 0, but actually greater than or equal to 80. So that's going to change this to 80 instead of 0. Of course, it doesn't make sense to send negative, but she has to send more than that. She has to send 80. So I'm going to change that one to 80. She must also send 60 more advanced than intermediate. So how do we represent this mathematically? 60 more advanced than intermediate. So 60 more than. More than would be plus. So that would be if we had intermediate is y, then x needs to be at least which is greater than or equal to. So the number of advanced needs to be greater than or equal to 60 more than the y. So that takes care of this right here, this 60 more advanced than intermediate and it's at least 60 more advanced. 
Now, just for the sake of graphing, I'm going to rearrange this inequality because I like them in vertex form. So I'm going to move the y over there. And I'm going to rewrite this as x minus y is greater than or equal to 60. All right, I think the last constraint is based on money. And if it costs $75 for each advanced player and $50 for an intermediate, that has to be less than or equal to the budget she has, which is 13250 Anybody see anything I'm missing here? Nope. Nope. Okay, so here is the system of inequalities or all of the constraints that I need to graph to obtain my feasible region. So let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, we're back. back. We're back, I said, but I meant to say back. We're back. And uh, we need to figure out what we're going to go by each square. So what is each square on our uh, graph here going to represent? So in order to determine that, let's figure out how far along we need to go. So what are the intercepts going to be here for x and y? So your x-intercept, what is that going to be? It's going to be something comma 0. So what do we get when we put 0 in for y? Well, if we put 0 in for y, then that means that this is basically gone, right? And then 75x equals 13,250 when x is, somebody help me out here because I don't have a calculator handy. What's 13,250 divided by, Chris, you got a calculator, divided by 75. What's, what's 13,250 divided by 75? It's going to be like 176.667. What? 176.6 repeated. 176.6 repeated. Okay. So 176 and two thirds. Well, we're not going to send two thirds of a person to camp, are we? No. You can't do that. You can't chop someone into two thirds and send them to camp. Okay. So you'd have to round down in that case because if you round it up, you would be over budget. So you'd have to round down. So we'd call that 176. And then what about for y? What is my intercept for y here? What is the y value when x is 0? So take that, divide that by 50. Well, if you divide it by 100 and then times it by 2, you get 265. So we got to get all the way up to 265, which means we need to have our graph go by what? How many squares do we have here? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Hmm. Maybe by 20s wouldn't be enough. 30s would be fine. 25, you'd get up to 300. That's a good one. We like 25s, don't we? I love them. All right, let's go buy 25s then. So the scale here is going to be 25. So then if I skip one, this is going to be 50, 100. I don't write every one. I write every other one. 200. So we have our scale put down as 50s, going by 50s, and we'll plot all of our graphs here. So all of our inequality lines. X greater than 80, then, is going to be over here between 75 and 100, just past 75, vertical line going somewhere around here. Okay, And of course, she has to send more than 80, so we're talking about being on the right side of that. So now we're above the red line and to the right of the blue line. Okay, let's graph the x minus y greater than or equal to 60. So when x is, 
let's see here. We're going to have a negative intercept. That's not good because our graph doesn't go down that far. So maybe it wasn't very smart to write it this way. What if we rewrite this back in slope intercept form? What are we dealing with here? Y is going to be, let's see here. If I move the X back over, it was negative X plus 60, right? So we'd have negative Y is greater than or equal to negative X plus 60. Divide by negative Y. Flip the sign. Oh, I shouldn't have covered up the mic. Flip the sign. We have then y is less than or equal to uh, x minus 60. Yes, sir. Okay. So now our y-intercept is down at 60. So that didn't really take care of our problem at all, did it? I should have known that was coming. Well, it's okay to embarrass yourself every once in a while. So we're going to go down here, and we're just going to add on to the graph a little bit. <laughs> All right, and uh, so our y-intercept is down here at 60 or so, and it's got a slope of 1. So this line's going to be coming through like this, sort of. Okay, and we are talking about below that line. So we're talking about that region there. Finally, the money constraint has a x-intercept of 176. So that's going to be right about here. And a y-intercept of 265, which is somewhere right about there. And that's going to be going through like that. So what we've created is a feasible region that is right in here. And what are we looking for when we have our feasible region? We're actually looking for the vertices. So where are the vertices here? Do I know that point? That point, that point, and that point. Okay, because the vertices are going to maximize the number of players at camp. So we want to say, Sue can send to camp uh, we're trying to maximize, so find the number of type of each player so you can send to camp and maximize the number of players. So the number of players is going to be equal to x plus y. So we want to maximize this equation here for the number of players, x plus y. And we do that by finding each one of these vertices and determining when we add the two together, which one gives you the most. So what are the vertices? Okay, well... This one down here is the point 80, 0. Is that going to maximize? Yeah, no. no. What about this point over here? This point over here is the point 176, 0, because we can't send two-thirds of a player to camp. This point right here is going to be, well, this is the line x equal to 80. So where does x equal 80 intercept with this line right here? So that's where is that line and that line, where do they meet? So when I put 80 in for x, what does y need to be? 20. So that point is the point 80, 20. How many players send to camp there? A hundred. Is that maximum so far? No, the maximum so far is 176 uh, advanced players. So we need to determine this one last point right here. And that is going to be the intersection of 
I'll use this green line, the intersection of this line and this line. So how do you determine the intersection of those two lines? You have to solve them in a system of equations. So you take those two lines and you make a system of equations. So when are those lines going to be equal? All right, so I'm going to take those and solve them in a system of equations. All right, so we're back, wrapping up this huge mess of a problem here. And we determined that the intersection point when we solved that system of equations using the elimination method was 130 advanced players and 70 intermediate players, which gives us a maximum of 200 players. So that would be our max right there, which would send a total of 200 players to camp, which is 24 more players than if you just send all advanced. So not bad, only a 16-minute problem. Um, that's why we only assigned one of these that night. Okay? So, any questions? No. Do you think it's right? Yeah. Is there anyone else in this class except for Kyle Shea? No. Nope? Okay. All right. Signing off.